showtime. Hey guys, I'm Matthew. This is Stacy. This is Wes. We're supposed to be talking about Beetlejuice, but we downgraded to Jim Carrey and his method act. You can edit the first part out, right? Yeah, we can. That's not a problem. <laughs> Use some as outtakes. So today we're going to be talking about Beetlejuice. Uh, Wes has a theory about why I chose Beetlejuice. Why, why do you think I chose Beetlejuice? Because they're stuck in their house and we're all kind of staying home right now. And I thought, like, oh, this is clever. He's mirroring what's going on in the real world. Which actually works <laughs> for the first pick, but that's not why I picked it. It's just a zany movie, and I really love it. How do I look? There are no mirrors on this side. Fine, look fine. Yeah? Fine. Thanks. I've been feeling a little flat. <laughs> So, Beetlejuice was kind of Tim Burton's stepping stone, because he'd done Pee-wee's big movie, right? <laughs> this was kind of his chance to prove himself, and he did, and that's how he got Batman. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. So, really? It was directly after this? Well, I mean, it was 88 and then 89 that Batman came out. So it was kind of like he was given this movie and he was given this huge production amount and then it was, oh, great, this you, guy you, can deliver. Do you know what the amount is, like how much the movie costs? Do you know that? I have no idea, but we're going to put it no. right here. <laughs> I, I, I wonder, Beetle, Beetlejuice, because I wondered about that because it's like all in essentially one location. There's a few external mm -hmm. shots, but like it's all in the house. And right. It, so I was like, how much did this movie cost? The guy who wrote the original screenplay was named Michael McDowell, who was a southern gothic writer from Alabama. And his original script, I'm going to read this straight from it because it's, it's really kind of crazy, but he imagined Beetlejuice as a winged demon whose form was that of a small Middle Eastern man, and the Dietzes, it was more about rape and murder than, you know, mischief and, and marriage, so it was very dark. Um, and if you've ever read anything by Michael McDowell, he can be a little dark. His Actually, his original idea, he was talking with a friend, and this is the haunted house idea is you move into a house, and the ghosts are evil. They haunt you, they scare you, they're trying to get you out of the house. And the idea was what happens if you are a good, a good couple dies, they're stuck in their house, and then bad people move in. And it's the Deets, that's the name. That's the, the Deets. That move okay. yeah, yeah. Which really, there's nothing evil about them. Charles, I will not stop living and breathing art just because you need to relax. I'm here with you. I will live with you in this hellhole, but I must express myself. If you don't let me gut out this house and make it my own, I will go insane and I will take you with me! Antithesis of the Matlins. Well, and, so, and, and I, think, I love that they're like so blissfully happy that they're mm -hmm. like staycation. <laughs> yes, they're just staying home. This is great. <laughs> well, that's of course where, um, and I forget the guy's name, Warren Scarrett, toned down the script and, and punched it up and made it a lot funnier than the original script. So it, it did end up not being where they were these completely horrible characters, the Deetses, but... <laughs> so, how long has it been since you've seen the movie? I literally watched it over the weekend. I think it was like Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember. <laughs> and how long had it been since you had originally seen it? God, it's probably the 90s. Over a decade. So I had forgotten a lot of stuff and blurred a lot of things. Like I was, I, like I thought Beetlejuice was in it a lot more. And some of the things that I remembered, I think, were actually the cartoon. Right. That came out in the 90s. And yeah. I had kind of blurred the... Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I definitely remembered the sandworms. Because I think they were mm -hmm. featured in the cartoon a lot. They were. Mm -hmm. So the minute they popped up on the screen, I was like, yes, okay, I remember these guys. See, I don't remember the cartoon at all. Really? I don't remember a plot or anything. I think maybe... I don't think there was an overwhelming plot. I think it was more just kind of like Beetlejuice and Lydia kind of go on little adventures through the netherworld. And it was just quirky little things that would happen to them along the way. Were they, the characters in the waiting room in it too? Because I had an image of like some of the characters as cartoon versions. Of the I think Juno showed up the on The guy with a shrunken head, maybe? I don't really remember that one. Okay. Hmm? I'm not sure. 
Mm-hmm. See, that's the backstory I would want. I, it bothered the, I want to know about the lady who's the receptionist. It's like, why is she green? Miss Argentina, I think is what her, her sass says. Yeah. She's the one that's like keeps telling them to wait. It's really. Um, am I mistaken, or did the um, interior designer just kind of disappear? Like, I kind of had where I finished the movie, and I'm like, was his ending that he made him where he changed the color of his suit? Okay. And, then had to, and then he runs off, and that's it. I think yeah. he just run out of the house. Yeah. Okay. He I was just scared. like, yeah, because yeah, he is like he. That was his comeuppance uh-huh. for like trying for to destroying kill. the house. Yeah. Or, or, or trying, trying to kill, to kill the Maitland. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Like that was a bad. Just got <laughs> you made him wear a what was but, it a turquoise suit? It was a leisure suit. Is it? <laughs> but it was a blue leisure suit. <laughs> jumps on Otho's back and he's like, we're going to have some laughs, fat boy, round boy, and he kisses him and... Not so fast, round boy, we're going to have some laughs. But all of that was ad-lib. Because you've already stated Beetlejuice wasn't in the movie very much, 17 yeah. minutes. Mm-hmm. And he ad the movie's named after him. Yeah. It's like he's really not in the movie. Though. Yeah, the Maitlands are basically the main character. It's their story through dealing with death, how to get through it, and then coming to terms with having to live with these people. It's their story, but I guess you need a main character to fix on which in the original script, or again, Beetlejuice was a major character. Which they did spend a lot of time talking about Beetlejuice, but a lot of it was how to avoid Beetlejuice. Do you know who played Gina? I love that. I love the little the little old lady who was like the, she was. Um, I cannot remember her name. Just her not, expression, not her name. She, she did not like, want to do the movie. She was from a bunch of older. She had done movies a long time ago, mm-hmm. and I think she was pretty much retired. And but Tim Burton had seen her and something was like, I really want her in this film. You two have really screwed up. I received word that you allowed yourself to be photographed. And you let Beetlejuice out and didn't put him back. And you let Otho get hold of the handbook. The handbook? When? Never trust the living. And um, I think he pretty much had to beg her to do it. And He actually flew out to meet with her and talk with her. When I was growing up, I always thought that the hole in her neck was one of those, you know, when you've smoked a really long time. But it's actually, a, her neck is sliced. Right, mm-hmm. she killed herself. Yeah, and so, because when I was rewatching, I was like, oh, that's not a, I cannot remember the name of them, but, you know, yeah. actual, like, where she had slit her throat. Mm-hmm. She was a caseworker, mm-hmm. so. Where if Beetlejuice was her, you know, direct underling, he would have had to have committed suicide, too. But I don't think you can really tell. I was going to say, how did Beetlejuice die? Like, like, it's yeah. never addressed. Mm-hmm. It's just, he has free he hair. He is. Let's see that. He just is. Mm-hmm. We were thinking about doing a sequel that almost got made. Mm-hmm. And it was going to be like tropical themed or something? Well, yeah. Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Warren, Warren Scarron, the guy who kind of punched up the, the script to make it funnier, was then asked to come in and add some levity to the Batman script. Then he went back and I think he wrote an original <clears throat> screenplay for Beetlejuice 2. It was the last thing he did before he died, and for some reason it just never got made. But several years ago in an interview, I think it was when um, Michael Keaton was getting a lot of uh, press for, what was the movie he did where he was the superhero? Not Batman? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like it was his... The Birdman. Was it the it Birdman was, one? It was the Birdman one. The press they were talking about, they were like, hey, we hear there's another Beetlejuice. And he's like, yeah, you know, it keeps coming up every few years. And he's like, I'm committed to it. And I want to say either Gina Davis or Winona Ryder are both committed to it. It's like, if it comes out, we'll do it. But he, one thing that I, I really liked about this movie is to find out that it was completely, like I said, 90% of Tim Burton was, or Mike Keaton was ad-libbed. Like the scene where they dig them out in the... All of that was in the script, and then from the point he flies out, it's all Michael Keaton. He came up with every bit of that, the exorcist. Your qualifications. Ah, well, I attended Juilliard. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy. No, 
that what you think? Lydia lets him out to save the Maitlands, which to me, he does save the Maitlands, so he served a purpose through the movie, because it's kind of their movie, and then at the end he saves them. The, all right, when uh, Beetlejuice does come out and gets rid of the, the couple that come from New York, there's, uh, there's that shot where he comes out and he's like, That is why I won't do two shows a night anymore, babe. I won't. I won't do. Well, what do we got here tonight, kids? He does a Carson impression. Yeah, I call Because he has his hands behind his back and then he does the golf swing. Ooh, uh, well, we got the, uh, the Maitlands. Uh, I think, uh, they've had enough exercise for a night. I didn't catch that until I, I watched I guess it at the time two weeks ago. Yeah, because it was the late 80s, so Carson was very big. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I caught some very non-child appropriate things throughout the, the movie that I'm like, it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be for kids. Yeah, I read it wouldn't have gotten the same rating today because there's like an F-bomb. There's one F-bomb in the middle. And that would have definitely made, I mean, it would have gotten a different rating. Oh, man, I was trying to figure out, oh, yeah, along with Spaceballs, Big, and Caddyshack 2, it is notable for containing the F word in a movie rated PG during the PG-13 era. Bunch of losers! You're working with a professional here! Oh, okay. Now we're going to have to watch Spaceballs. See, I've watched that a lot. That's one of the ones I But apparently... And of course, it was a totally ad-libbed ad uh, situation. All right, favorite scenes? Any favorite scene? Because that was my favorite scene. I like the yeah. other world stuff when they're just when they're in the waiting room and that it's the show don't tell everyone. Like you said, everyone's got a story and you kind of right. want to know. Mm -hmm. I think you said that on camera. You kind of want to know everyone's backstory. That's right. Scene. I really like that one. Yeah. The um, when they say over the intercom, like um, what was that like? Flight one hundred and fifty or something. The real thing, uh, an actual flight had went down, um, and they were, yeah, where everybody perished. And I always thought that was like, wow, that's that's really morbid, but that's neat that they used that. And I always kind of like when the uh, the football players came in. Oh like, yeah, oh, coach. I don't feel so good, and he's like, <laughs> I'm not your coach. Why he survived. <laughs> Why are they in the end scene dancing with the family though? I'm like, because it's just fun. <laughs> it's just like we're all right. To me, the. Besides the kicking the tree over and swearing, the best scene is when they're getting married. And he's like, the ring, the ring. <laughs> you know I got it. He starts pulling mice and snakes out. Honey, here it is. There you go. I'm telling you, honey, she meant nothing to me. Nothing at all. We all got the symbolism of the red dress. Hmm? No, no, but I knew it was something. Married in red, wish yourself dead. Oh no! Oh. Yeah, because there's different little sayings like um, Laura Ingalls Wild in her in her Little House on the Prairie book. Um, she was married in a black dress, and her mother told her, "You're know, like, oh well, you know the old saying. It's like um, married in black, wish yourself back." Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different little things around wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. The guy who played Otho, this is to me is is absolutely hilarious. Um, he died in September of 2010, and the last song performed at his service was Deo. <laughs> Which just would kind of freak me out if I was sitting at that funeral thinking, is he going to lift up out of that coffin and start? But we talked about, did we talk about that on camera? About our favorite funeral, what we do at our funeral? No, 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 no. <laughs> the, 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 oh man, the idea where that was supposed to be the scene where they were scared out of the house, but then they actually got in, they, they liked it. But there was the scene where they started singing Deo, mm -hmm. and the Maitlands thought, they're going to get scared, they're going to run out that door, but it, they got oh, into it. Talking about when you talked about, or, uh, it was in your office, Yeah, and I was like, I like that they, every time they had something like that, they made the choice to go against. Right. Well, what I, so they should have freaked out. But and they, they did. That's what you're talking about. Okay, okay, yes. So, all right. I'm not completely crazy. But what was funny was uh, Otho picked up the, what the ice bucket said, and started getting what into we it. Just and said, then he realized he's just doing it and he's like a little weird and then he just gets back into it. So Normal experience and it was real. Delia, you are a flake. You have always been a flake. If you insist on frightening people, do it with your sculpture. I, I actually kind of like the art. Mm -hmm. 
to each his own. I was going to say, the thing is, art is different to everybody. Well, I mean, it was so crappy. <laughs> I just I don't like, like that. I like certain aspects of the stuff in the house. I mean, I was intrigued. I like the larger like, pieces. I like the, ta- well, the table that they were sitting at, the mm-hmm. big granite slab. I was kind of, but other things. Um, Beetlejuice makes, I think it's on the hat when he pops up, and it's been, looks like some of his later stuff from A Nightmare Before Christmas. You're talking about at the end, yeah. where he comes up. Yeah, there's, there's like well, bat wings, and then I the, think the there's bat like a little little stick figure there's a, that looks a lot like some of the Nightmare Before Christmas. Think so. And I want to say Nightmare Before Christmas was based on a poem that Michael McDowell wrote. So that's another connection that he Are you has. saying it's a shared universe? I don't know. That's maybe, why not? maybe, yeah. Let's because I mean, a lot of Tim Burton there. movies, people will sit there and say like, "Oh, well, this is this character, you know, alive. This is when he had already passed away." Like the Court Bride, and then the Nightmare Before Christmas, and there's a certain way that you line them up, and some people say that there's overflow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought it was interesting was some of the people that they wanted to play characters that they didn't end up getting. Like Angelica Houston, she was offered the role, she took it, she was sick though, and so she backed out of it. Talk about Delia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They went to Catherine O'Hare. Yeah, but, and then like in 1991, she ended up playing Morticia Adams, which to me is kind of like, she she would have done. She's perfect for that role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I couldn't see anybody other than Catherine now, but thinking about like Angelica, it's kind of like, yeah, I think she would have kind of nailed it too. Mm -hmm. Well, if we were talking about Sammy Davis Jr. is who someone, I don't think it was Tim Burton, but somebody Sammy envisioned Davis. Sammy Davis Jr. as Beetlejuice, mm-hmm. yeah, which if, if it was the Tim Burton zany out there, it, I go like a sailor, whoopee! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, uh, the car dealer chip, the ad on the TV. I'll scare them real bad. The point is, folks, I'm going to do anything to get your business. Hell, I'll possess myself if I gotta. Wow! Yo, I got demons running all through me, all through me. Come on down here and see it. You know who it reminded me of more recently? This ties back in the libraries. Curbside Larry. Curbside <laughs> Larry. <laughs> yeah. Hey, folks, Curbside Larry here at the Barbara Bush Library, and we're crazy with curbside service. We got him. Oh, the scene where um where where they're asking him if he can if he can be scary. What do you think of this? You like it? They had worked on like parts for a space like the, the animation, so the claymation, the but then they thought it was going to be too expensive to do it, and then they're like, well, if we leave it up to their imagination, it could be scary. It gets scarier because you don't see it. Yeah. You just get the, You're the, like, the couple's ooh. reaction to it. Wes Craven was the first person people thought of to direct. Really? Wow, it really would have been a different movie. It w- they probably because he gone, can do humor, but he's it's more like twisted. Well, he probably would have gone more with the original script, which of course he leaned more happen. into the gross out kind of right. There. I like, the original ending, he was actually supposed to be like tortured by the sandworms. Okay, but then apparently test audience just kind of, I guess they kind of like fell in love with the character, and so it wasn't. They're like you give him a better ending. So he's more of a lovable jerk. <laughs> yeah, guess, mm-hmm. yeah, pretty much. At the end of it, he didn't do anything. No, that's true. Comment. He didn't do really anything bad, but he was, like, was going to trick Lydia into marrying, which is... Yeah, one of the, but he didn't. One mm-hmm. of the little moments in the film I like, just that kind of stuck with me, is when they ask, I can't remember the way it's phrased, but it's, why are they, they so messed up that the main characters are normal? And she's like, well, death's subjective. I just kind of like that idea, that that's their death, that's yeah, his that's death. that's how you and, die. And that's, a, it's like kind of implying that to me that they were happy with who they were so they didn't go through and the, the way they died didn't change their self image they didn't look like drowned corpses even yeah. though they could they well there was the guy that had the shark on his leg mm-hmm. yeah but they didn't have that like shouldn't they have looked like drowned corpses because they died going into the, the river right but instead they just looked like them and it's well, like I think it was supposed to say like I well you're doing it to yourself how long the people well, you know, were before they were like found, where I would have, you know, it was a, a small, you know. Well, uh, Tim Burton addressed that at some point. He's like, yeah, they should have been wet the whole time, but that would have been hard to do throughout the movie. So he's like, we kind of had to do a 
a cheat there. But oh, the end of the movie when um when Lydia's singing to uh what's the name of that movie? Jump in the line. The song. They were gonna do um Percy Sledge when a man loves a woman. Yeah. That would have been a completely different. That would have been rhythm. so weird. And Burton, of course, came in and made it all Calypso music, okay. which is why you get Dao and and uh, jump in the line. I think after you changed it to you know Dao, you have to change the other stuff. Otherwise, it's just Tunnel it show. sticks out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just one of those movies that you can watch it repeatedly and still find something new about it. But at the same time, it's also one of those you can just have running in the background. I think it's a comfort movie. It yeah, is. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like it's a comfortable movie. Mm -hmm. Like I think it was one of the movies like when when COVID first started. So it's like junk food. And I was working at home. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just had it on in the background, and I was like working on a report, and then realized like after about thirty minutes that I'm just watching Beetlejuice, <laughs> getting paid to watch Beetlejuice. I need to be working, and then of course I finished the movie and went back to work. And you just told on yourself, didn't you? I can edit that part out. <laughs> As a way to wrap it up, why don't we do like one to five stars only because we're in quarantine. It's like one to five masks. <laughs> like, oh! Like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, like from best to worst and like what you would rate it as. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> so what would you rate it? Uh, four masks. Hmm? Me too, I was thinking four. And I can't quite give it five because of those little naggy feelings I had. This is me. Sorry. Four, 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 four and a half masks. Okay. Sounds like better you got an A in the math test. He likes it. Well, just to, like, our thoughts on it, the thing, what we're going to talk about, and you're dropping all these cool little kernels. I'm sorry, you totally have to edit this part out. Mm -hmm. Please don't leave in when I'm telling you what it should be like. It was just, <laughs> it was occurring to me as we were talking.